big year with the Boston Celtics, who are 40 and 1 at home. The Chicago Bulls try for one of the great upsets in history as they take on the Celtics in Boston next here on TBS. gathering at the Boston Garden to watch the Celtics take on the Chicago Bulls as the NBA playoffs get underway. TBS Sports presents the 1986 NBA playoffs brought to you by Miller Beer. Miller made the American way since 1855 by Renault Jeep, official vehicles of the NBA. By Men in Speed Stick Deodorant gives you man-sized protection against perspiration odors. Let the wide stick give you the edge. By Pizza Hut, the home of Pan Pizza and Friazzo Italian Pie. And by Delta Airlines, serving more than 100 cities in the U.S. and overseas. Delta gets you there. Hello again, everybody, along with John Andre and Skip Carey, welcoming you to another night of NBA basketball, a different night tonight. As the 1986 playoffs get underway, the Celtics and Chicago Bulls get together and John, I'm going to lay some negative stats on you that I know you already know. Chicago has won just eight games on the road this year. The Celtics have won 31 in a row at home. They're 40 and 1 for the year. They beat Chicago six times this year in the regular season and as many times out. Chicago can win, but boy, it'll be some upset. What must they do to have a chance? Well, they have to do more of what they've been doing lately, and that is playing very good basketball. They come in on a winning note. Psychologically, they're very up team right now. That's due, of course, to their superstar being back. Michael Jordan is back, and there are no limits to his playing time in this game, as there haven't been in the last couple. But he's really ready to go and cut loose. Woolridge has only played in three of the six games this year against Boston and has done very well in those games, averaging 29. And he also plays Larry Bird very well, as he did in one game this year, holding him to 12. This team has proven, Chicago, one very key thing. The Boston Celtics are the best rebounding team in the NBA, and this year in their six games, they out-rebounded the Bulls by two per game. That isn't too impressive. So I think if the Bulls can come out and battle on the boards very tough, as they've shown they can, and play a little above their heads, they could maybe pull some surprises tonight. Capacity crowd is gathering, of course, and there'll be big crowds elsewhere. A lot of NBA playoff action starts tonight. And to bring you up to date on all of that, let's switch back to Atlanta. Bob Neal. Bob? Thank you, Skip. As you said, we've got a lot of playoff action to keep abreast of tonight. Of course, coming up right after the Chicago-Boston game, right here on the Superstation, the Los Angeles Lakers will begin defense of their NBA title against the San Antonio Spurs, and Rick Barry and Bill Russell will be bringing you the game from the Forum as soon as the Bulls and Celtics have finished. And two other series get started tonight as well, right here in Atlanta. The NBA's leading scorer, Dominique Wilkins, leads the Hawks against Detroit, and in Houston, the Rockets will open with Sacramento. We'll be here all evening long to keep you up to the minute on all the playoff goings-on as they happen. And right after this message, Skip and John will be back with a tip-off in Boston. There's the Chicago lineup for the game tonight. Woolridge has averaged 29 a game against Boston throughout the year. Stan Albeck, the coach of the Chicago team. One of his assistants, Murray Arnold, just took the head coaching job at West Texas State today. Stan very confident about his team. Western Kentucky. What did I say? West Texas. Sorry, Murray. There's the Boston lineup. And Casey Jones, a very low-key but very capable coach of the Boston team. I better get that right. Murray, Murray Arnold go. <laughs> He's the head coach at Western Kentucky, and whoever is the coach at West Texas State, I apologize. <laughs> you can stay. Keep him on his toes. Our referees, Jack Madden and Paul Mahalik and Jim Capers, on the right of your picture, is the alternate. Madden is in the middle. And we're about ready to go. A capacity crowd here. They've had a capacity crowd every night they've played in the Boston Garden since back in mid-season of 1980. This is one situation where it was not necessary to have Michael Jordan come in to sell tickets as he does in many of the arenas he plays in because they're here automatically in Boston. Well, we sincerely hope that you'll enjoy it and you'll stay with TBS for San Antonio and the Lakers from the Forum next with Rick Barry and with Bill Russell. The tip is won by Chicago. This is Kyle Macy, and Danny Ainge will play him. 
Corzine with a pick. Now handles the ball, and Bird almost stole that. Macy goes to the hole, and it was. Macy does not have that jumping ability, and that's why he couldn't continue in for a layup on that play. He was almost there, but he knows he's better off passing it out to the open man. Kane just calls for the foul. Jordan changed it in midair, got it nonetheless. Could Dennis Johnson have played him any better? No. <laughs> Two nothing, Chicago. Bird against Woolridge. Dennis Johnson played by Jordan. Parrish against Oakley, who held it. Paul Mahalik has had both the early fouls. This one on Oakley, his first. That is a major cause of concern for Chicago. Oakley getting in foul trouble. He is so important to them on the board. McHale works inside against Corzine, and another whistle prior to the basket. It is disallowed. Corzine is called for the foul. His first team second. They play without Jawan Oldham, does Chicago, who has a broken cheekbone. He'll be available for game four, they think, if in fact a game four is played. McHale against Corzine. Down under Ames. We're tied at two. 11.05 left in the first quarter. Jordan for two. He's two out of two. It's the game of isolation the Bulls will play. They will isolate Jordan, let him go one on one, and Orlando Woolridge. Dennis Jordan forced it and missed it. Big scramble. McHale out of there with it. Little running one handed. It's 4 4. Corzine and Woolridge must go to the boards. Oakley can't be the only man. Woolridge faked, almost walked, then missed. Rebound, though, by Corzine. Chicago has the lead. What Chicago wants to do is slow this thing down to a walk and take away Boston's transition game. Stan Albach told us before the game, look for, we're going to try to hold them below 100. Woolridge is really giving Larry Bird the respect he deserves, playing without the ball, tough. Bird handles it now. Parrish against the double team. Knocked away by Jordan, recovered by Woolridge. Woolridge into the lane, shoots on the run. Wild shot, terrible shot. Ainge with Parrish. What a classic example of what a four shot can do to your team, how it can hurt you. We're tied at six. We have 9.35 left. Quarter number one. Don't forget as we go along here tonight, Bob Neal standing by to keep you abreast of the other sports action and the other playoff activity tonight. Jordan got it from the baseline. He's got six. Boston is yet to lead in the game. Chicago 8-6. What's happening to Dennis Johnson's brain, Skip? <laughs> One of the best, if not the best, defensive guards in the NBA is not having much of an effect on Michael Jordan. Illegal defense called against Chicago. Next time they do it, it'll be a T. McHale against Corzine. Fakes. A little runner is good. Boy, he is some player. Eight, eight, nine minutes left in the first quarter. Both teams' offense is operating well. Haynes gambled on a steal, didn't get it, and Macy drilled it. Chicago by two again. Bird, double team. Yeah, Woolridge didn't bite for that fake. Jordan winds up on the deck, now so does Ames. The foul will be on Jordan. He's okay. Looks like he just hit a wet spot there. His first third team foul. Everyone associated with the Bulls has their hearts skip a beat whenever Jordan hits the floor. Offensive foul back live is called against Boston. McHale is called for it. His first no team foul. Celtics have to help Dennis Johnson guarding Michael Jordan. And see how much room he's being given by his teammates. Almost like the playground, isn't it? Not winning basketball. The ball has to be shared, Skip. Dennis Johnson rimmed it, wouldn't go. McKay and a foul.
It's on Corzine, his second. And Chicago's in a world of hurt here. This is an example of why the Celtics are one of the best rebounding teams in basketball. The quickness, the long arms of Kevin McHale, even when he's being boxed out, he can get over people. He has seven. And the Celtics have their first lead of the night. It's 11 10. Kale has all the Boston rebounds. Jordan hangs in the air, puts it down. He has eight. They've got to involve Woolridge in the offense. Bird doesn't have a shot yet, I don't think. Look at Woolridge chasing everywhere. Johnson threw up a hand grenade for Zane the rebound. It was played very well by George. He didn't slow it down. Let the air out of it every chance they can. Jordan beat Dennis. Oh, breathtaking. He's got 10. I would say he makes a little difference for the Chicago. <laughs> Parrish walks. Chicago has it back. Look at this. Oh, hangability. What? He's got it. Hangability. Hangability. <laughs> Kyle Macy, front court. Woolridge walks. See, it's a steady diet here of one-on-one -on -one basketball and offense for the Bulls. It will be wonderful as long as Michael Jordan makes every one of his shots, but sooner or later that will not happen, and the other members of his team have to handle that ball and feel it a little bit in order to become involved. We have a 20-second timeout, and even though it's a playoff game, John, it's a big opportunity for you. No, no rehearsal either. No. This program is authorized under rights granted by the National Basketball Association solely for the entertainment of our audience. And any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the National Basketball Association is prohibited. And it's now turned into a regular timeout for Boston. I wonder if somebody got shaken up. We'll come back in a moment. That was very unusual. I'm not trying to make more out of it than it was, but it's very unusual this early in a game to call your 20 and then to follow it with a full timeout. Everybody appears okay for Boston, so we can only surmise as to what Casey Jones had on his mind. Well, that's the effect Michael Jordan can have on a team. He needed a lot of time to talk about defense and help out. Danny Ainge up the floor. Chicago by three at 14-11. Bird Ainge, yes. The greatness of Larry Bird in his passing. Kyle Macy up the floor against Ainge. Macy, yes, a three-pointer. That's the kind of help offensively that the Bulls need, and it's happening. Their guards have 15 of their 17 points. Bird fades, fires, and misses. Jordan, the rebound, he is everywhere. Leading rebounder on the team last year. Chicago can build a six-point lead if they convert here. The other thing their slowdown tactic does, as Jordan pops away from 17, it enables Woolridge and Jordan to play more time because they won't be running up and down the floor. Well, when Jordan ends up taking a shot like that, though, all the good things that the Bulls do just get flushed because that's just not the, not the way to do it. Ains missed the chip shot after the good bounce pass from Parrish. Almost a lost arc, that bounce pass. Jordan front court. 5.35 remaining in the quarter. They roll it low to Corzine. Did he walk? No, score the goal. The natives get restless here. It's 19-13 Chicago. Bird has not yet been heard from. Ains with a little hook shot left it short. Woolridge with the rebound. Chicago can build an eight-point lead. Bird gambled on the steal, didn't get it. Woolridge, yes. They're shooting an amazing percentage, the Bulls. There you go. 
I would say so. Boston not doing that badly, but they're getting outgunned here. What a move by McHale. Well, he's eating up Dave Corzine, that's clear. Jordan with Corzine setting the pick. Bird knocks it loose. Who's the foul going to be on? Bird, I think. Michael agrees. Bird's anticipation. Now look at him gambling and coming out. There's the foul after the steal. Oh. Oakley and Bonds. What an example of Bird's awareness and team help. Warred. Do they get him going there? Chances increase. Well, what's good for the Bulls right now is their frame of mind has to be excellent. Ainge for three, yes. He has seven, McHale nine, Parrish the other two. Dennis Johnson, Larry Bird are pointless. Charles Oakley has failed to score for Chicago. Neither team has made a change. Oakley. I don't think he knows what, how much time is on the clock. Two seconds, one second, that's good if it goes. Whoa, what a play by Ainge, he's got a two on one. Parrish. They are so unselfish. 23-20. Parrish's mobility really showing. 3.26 left, first quarter. Chicago by three and with the ball. Corzine gets the easy poop. The hoop Ainge wound up on the deck. Great execution on the switch by Corzine and Kyle Macy. Lovely pass by Macy. There's the score. Time call to get the moisture off the deck. The Celtics ball boy wins a good housekeeping suit. And back to hostility suit. 3.15 remaining in the first quarter. John Andre, Skip Carey with you from the Boston Garden. Bird from 20. He's on the board. It took him nearly nine minutes to get there. Bet he scores some more before it's over. Well, it happened also with good team play. A nice pick was set for Larry Bird, and that's what enabled him to shake Orlando Woolridge. That's what team play is all about. Woolridge answers the bell. He has six. 27 22, Chicago. 242 left in a very good first point. McHale threw it away. Oakley was there. Parrish didn't go for the hoop. Woolridge against Ainge. Got it. Orlando has eight. Dennis Johnson heads up the floor. It's a seven-point game again. 20-second timeout. Called by Boss. Oh, I see what happened. Before, when they called the 20-second timeout, it was time for the first regulation commercial, so it was just turned into a regular timeout. And now they're not going to let them have this 20-second either because it's time for Chicago's timeout. <laughs> What's going on here? Timeout on the floor. 2.22 left. Bob Neal probably bring you up to date on the Hawks to train game. Seven-point game here in the Boston Garden. At the conclusion of the game, we'll select the Miller Lite Most Valuable Player of the Game, and in conjunction with the award, Turner Broadcasting and Miller Lite will present a check for $500 to the National Multiple Sclerosis Society in that player's name. Bruce Hurst of the Red Sox looks on here. I know all the Braves players are down. Many of them are at the Omni in Atlanta watching that Detroit Atlanta playoff team. That has the potential to be a five-game series. Certainly. That'll be a great matchup. Skip Chicago has made 14 out of 18 shots. Celtics 11 out of 16. That was kicked. A new 24 second clock for Boston. That's amazing. Oh. Playoff pressure hasn't exactly bothered anybody here. Two oh six left in our first quarter. Three, three. Dennis Johnson left it short. Battle for the rebound. Foul Oakley. Bird drew that. 
And there's a big spot in the game. Oakley has two fouls. Corzine has two fouls up front. Chicago is very weak off their bench with Juan Oldham dressed but unable to play. Woolridge could not keep Bird off the boards on that play. Bird spun around and got the good position, causing Oakley to have to react to Bird, and he did too hard. That's, that's a, Larry's third point. Yeah, that's, that's like a miss to him. It hit the rim too much. Well, he had a game, what, last a week or ten days ago where he missed two free throws against Philly? They could have punched him. Absolutely. That doesn't happen every day. Then he went to the final game at the end of the year and hit seven out of seven to win the free, uh, free throw crown. Oakley broke away, got off the snipe. Well, how about Kyle Macy picking him out and throwing that pass? So everybody has scored except Dennis Johnson now, and it's 31-23. Chicago, Bird knocked away. Parrish comes out of there with it. He loses it. It's recovered by Oakley. Macy with a quick hand, not to lose. And friends and neighbors, Chicago can build themselves a 10-point lead here with a minute 22 remaining in the quarter. Jordan, late whistle and a foul is called. What Jordan seems to be doing when he is played very well is still forcing the shot instead of looking for the open man. Chances are when he's being played well, that means two or three men are containing him, which means two or three teammates are, are open. Chicago's first free throw attempt of the night. Uh, one reason for that, they've been popping away from outside. Jordan, an 84% shooter in his fractured season. Corzina. Sidney Green is in for Chicago. Green's had a leg injury of late, had five days off this week, and supposedly feels a lot better and ready to go. He's had a number of very good games on the boards against Boston this year. 33-23, Chicago foul Michael Jordan. That is his second. So now Oakley, Corzine, and Jordan have two fouls each. That may not be a factor now, but boy, it might be later. Coaching staff on the Bulls feels that Michael Jordan has the potential to be a great defensive player. He's got all the skills. A minute 10 left in the quarter. It's 33-25 Chicago. More points scored than the Bulls really wanted, but they're happy with the way it looks. Woolridge trying to unload Camp. Now he does. Michael Jordan. Wheels fades off balance. Oh. Absolutely amazing. He did everything wrong except hit the bottom of the basket. Tell you, Skip, that one-on-one -on -one basketball is winning basketball. I say it time and time again. <laughs> it is when you play it like that. <laughs> Parrish gets the rebound, drew the foul, shoots two. If it's on Oakley, it's his third. It is, and it is. That's real bad news for the Bulls. Well, they say it's only his second personal foul. I gave one to him that should have gone to Woolridge. My mistake. I apologize. That's two on Oakley, one on Woolridge. Parrish makes the two free throw. 35-27, 35 seconds remaining in the quarter. Jordan's calling out a play. See if he calls one out for himself or someone else. <laughs> He's just firing away. Danny Ainge yells one shot as he heads down the floor. We'll give you the time when it becomes significant. Shot clocks are turned off. 13 seconds left in the quarter. And now 10. He missed the slam dunk. McHale, that won't go. One second. Ainge, that does not count if it's good, and it isn't. And boy, Boston missed a couple of chip shots there. The end of a quarter, your score. Chicago 35, Boston 27. Well, so far, a big surprise here, an eight-point Chicago lead. 
that's not as big a surprise, but a little surprising early on. Detroit leading Atlanta. They are still in the first quarter, and you see it there on our Menon scoreboard. Michael Jordan's been the show in this one, John. He certainly has, Skip. He's been spectacular. And uh, it's just such a pleasure to see him play. He's just such a great player. I don't like, however, the style of play the Bulls are, are executing here. I don't think it's going to sustain a winning effort throughout, but it sure is fun watching him go. Oh, this is the the wildest of all of them. Now, if you're Dennis Johnson, you've got to go home and think about going out the window, don't you? Yeah, you, you start thinking, am I, am I losing it? <laughs> what am I missing, you know? A long way to go here. Of course, Gene Banks has checked, checked into the game for Chicago. Jerry Seasting is in the game for the Celtics, along with Bill Walton. And away from the ball, Green is holding McHale. That was a near mugging over there. Skip McHale is claiming that area is his alone, and Green doesn't want to give it to him. And right after the foul, they go to McHale, and he wheels inside and gets the hoop. John Andre, Skip Carey with you from the Boston Garden NBA playoff basketball act. More of it later from the forum, the Lakers and San Antonio Spurs. Jordan drew the foul, missed the shot, Dennis Johnson got it. Dennis Johnson feeling that Jordan went into his defensive territory, which he has a right to. Casey Jones now is unleashing the depth was a look at the uh, at the end of that move. Dennis Johnson felt he got a bad call on. The KC now showing us Bill Walton and Jerry Seasting. Two reasons why this Celtics team is deeper than last year and why they perhaps may be the best team ever in the opinions of uh, any experts. That the conversation really can't continue though until after the playoffs. So far they're not the best team in this series. That's off the earth. Ow. Walton over the back, but no whistle, and Macy comes away with a deflected rebound. 37-29. Chicago can match their biggest lead of 10 with a hoop here. Jordan threw it away. Jerry Seasting out of there with it. Well, he went to the air without a logical outlet. Yeah, the laws of gravity tripped him up there. <laughs> McHale can't handle the pass from Walton. And Chicago makes a change. John Paxson into the game. Kyle Macy goes up. Paxson has come on strong the second half of the year. They rush it up the floor to Oakland. Yes, he earned his stripes in the latter part of the year with the Bulls. Played a key role in that stretch when they earned that playoff spot. Jordan loses it again, but a foul. See the awareness the Celtics have defensively to him. When Jordan went to the basket, all of a sudden there were five white shirts around him. Watch how they react to him now. How quickly all those legs move in the direction of Jordan. Well, I'll tell you what, somebody else is going to have to get the call here on Jordan for that's three fouls on Dennis Johnson. He departs and Rick Carlisle is into the game. Jordan at the line to shoot two. The first of which is perfect. He's having a career here. He has 17. And we have 10.38 remaining in the first half. <laughs> to remind people that the Celtics are a great defensive team, too. Well, let's see uh, next time down who gets the unenviable task of playing Mr. George. George Gervin about to check in, so it looks like he'll be going out of the game. Well, George. Carlisle comes in firing and missing. Rebound, Bird. Couldn't find anybody to pass to, so he made the hoop. Bird's unhappy because Banks has been banging him real hard. Bird plays Banks. Good pass. Oakley drove the baseline, got the hoop, and that's what Banks was. Doing that whole time, he controlled the ball. He had a little two-man game going with Oakley. Jordan with great anticipation. He's off to the race. Watch this. Woo 43-31 Chicago. That's right, if you just joined us. 
Now it's serious time for the Celtics. They've been sparring long enough. Mikhail from 17. He's keeping him around. He's got 13. Now is when I love to watch Bird skip. You know, he's quiet. He's just another guy out there. Now they, there's a sense that the Celtics have to take over and push the Bulls away. Green walked. Boston gets the ball. This is a one-on-one -on -one game style of offense that is working. Stan Albeck, the coach of the Bulls who we're looking at, has designed this one-on-one -on -one isolation offense, and it's working for them. Jordan out, Gervin in. We saw him go for 45 earlier this year. If he gets hot, too. Wow. Seasting, nobody played him. Bingo. That's why he's grown in importance here. That's the dimension they did not have last year when their outside shooting let them down against the Lakers. Now they have it. Orlando Woolridge about to return for Chicago. Paxson, long range bomb, won't go. Sidney Green traveled again. In fairness to Green, the floor is very slick. Players from both teams have been tumbling around tonight. Oakley gets a rest as Woolridge returns. Robert Parrish about to get back into the game for Boston. And McHale will probably go out for a rest. Foul on Banks on the back of Bird. The idea defensively against Bird for the Bulls is to deny him the ball. The feeling is he normally gets the ball 50 times in a game. Let's make it 40. And it's as simple as that. That's why Banks got that foul, trying to deny the ball. Bird from Walton who set the pick. The more he touches it, the more likely he is to do that. Or give somebody a layup down right. under. Bird has seven. And Boston has crept back to within six. Gervin is posted up against Carlisle. That won't go. Walton the rebound. Seasting. It's a four-point game, and Chicago is going to call timeout. They're on their feet in the Boston Garden. Timeout on the floor. 7.26 remaining in the first half, and the Celtics appear to be making their move. Rick Barry, Bill Russell warming up in the bullpen. They'll have the Spurs and Lakers in game one of their series next. Meanwhile, down home in Atlanta, 42-38 now, in the second quarter, the Hawks have claimed the lead over the Pistons. And play about to resume here. It's now a four-point Chicago game, but the momentum, as it were, has switched to the Celtics in the last minute. It seems to relate to Michael Jordan getting a rest. Woolridge forced a long-range jumper. Chicago suddenly struggling, and you're right, Jordan's not in there. That's certainly part of that. Seasting spots up on the baseline to Parrish. Foul Gervin. Boston is going to their strength now inside. When you, when you do an analysis of why the Celtics are as great as they are this year, so much of it points to the passing. Everybody on this team is passing the ball so much better. As a matter of fact, Parrish, the man at the line now, and McHale had more assists this year than they ever had in their careers before. So the passing of Bird and now Walton has spread to the other big guys. The team is a true team. It was a 12-point Chicago lead. Now it's three. Still 6.50 remaining until halftime. Bourbon is checked. Green. Bird the rebound. Well, they're not getting good shots There's at all. No though. inside game. There is here. Paris shoots two more. Gerben and Green both were there. And the Boston bench has just beaten the daylights out of the Chicago bench. And it's funny, Skip. 
five times this year out of the six times they played it was reverse the Bulls bench beat the Celtics Jerry Seasting pushes that ball up and Parrish gets there that's the thing with him you don't think of him as a running big man but he is and he beats his man down time and again Gervin is gone Jordan has returned Sidney Green is out of the game Dave Corzine back in I think the rest like the one Jordan just got are the best Bird two, taking his first rest of the night two three minutes just long enough to settle down not get cold and back in it was a 12 point Chicago lead now they lead by one Banks heads to the front court but Walton is there to check him Scotty Wedman is in the game taking Bird's place for Boston Carlisle has the unenviable task of playing Jordan isn't that something? It's just breathtaking. Seaston, great move, lost Banks. He's three out of three. Boy, he's making Red Auerbach look smart. <laughs> Red Auerbach is smart. <laughs> Called for that foul. That's got to be an awful feeling to be good. Be Carlisle Garden, a guy you know is quicker than you are, and Walton plays Woolridge. Corzine threw it away, but Paxson recovers. They have 14 seconds on the shot clock. They clear the zone for Jordan. Well, if he doesn't get any help, Jordan's going to score at will. I mean, Carlisle just wants his mommy. <laughs> Dennis Johnson with the three fouls is on the bench being very sympathetic. <laughs> Parrish wheels, beats his man, but stepped on the end line. He spun by Corzine, but he stepped out of bounds in the process. So Chicago can push it back up to five, and they appear to have slowed the first Celtic thrust. I haven't looked at the uh, your scoreboard there lately. What, what does Jordan have? Forty? No, just twenty-four. <laughs> Five ten left in the first half. Away from the ball, a whistle and a foul. Carlisle again, and Dennis Johnson with the three fouls comes back in. Carlisle goes out. This is a big gamble by Casey Jones. It certainly is. Maybe they feel they can wear Jordan out. All of a sudden, the Celtics don't look that deep, do they? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Knocked away. Big scramble out of there, Dennis Johnson. Ahead to Scott Wedman. Cross court, C stick. Four out of four. Forty seven forty six Chicago. We got a good one going four thirty five till halftime. Jordan from nine sixty. He's got twenty six. That was like a layup. He didn't even have a hand in the face. Wedman for three. No. Jordan at the other end with a rebound. David third kill about to get into the game for Boston. There goes Jordan. He's held and fouled again. It's on Paris. This is a slow acceleration, actually, for Michael Jordan. Paris leaned in there, tried to help out. Seasting arrived. Bird is back, and third kill is in the game as well for Boston. How's this for Jordan? 10 out of 13 from the field. Seven out of seven from the line. And that adds up to 27 points. Four, four minutes and nine seconds to go in the first half. Fifty-one, forty-six, Chicago. Seasting against Paxson. Less than four minutes to the break. Bird fake. Drew the foul, loose ball foul on Banks. 
Oakley, Corzine, Jordan, Banks, and Green, two fouls each. Nobody has more than that. Carlisle has two, and Dennis Johnson, three for Boston. Bird with his eighth point. Bulls have obviously done a very good job on Larry Bird thus far. They have succeeded in their mission. The Celtics, of course, have not succeeded in anywhere near containing Michael Jordan. And Jim, third kill out for Boston. Bird hit them both, 51-48. 3.52 left in the first half. Bob Neal back at the studios, bringing you up to date at halftime and all the other sports action and playoff action of the day and night. Jordan had a knock away from behind. It's still Chicago's ball with 10 seconds on the shot clock. Banks triggers it in to Corzine. Jordan in and out. Big tip in. Looked like Banks, didn't it? That's who they give it to. His first points. Bird. Oh, what a shot. Delay of the game warning is issued against Bird. Bird doesn't jump as high as Jordan, but he sure gets it done, doesn't he? And Jordan brings it up the floor. Boy, he is exerting a lot of energy in this game. Well, he sat out for 64 games, so he's got a lot. And if the organization had had its way, he'd still be sitting up. See who they call it on. They're going to call it travel on Seaston. And Jordan drew that. That's a demonstration of his defensive awareness, Michael Jordan. He senses Seaston getting the ball now, and he just got to that position. Offered himself up. McHale in, Walton out for Boston. Three minutes till halftime. <laughs> Woolridge hangs in the air, banks it home. Just spectacular stuff going on here by the Bulls offensively. One-on-one -on -one spectacular play. They lead by five, 55-50. Bird in a mess and a whistle and a foul. It's on Banks and that's his third and it's a Boston timeout here. Timeout on the floor and the Bulls continue to hold the lead. And we're about to go back to play here. Of those 33 Chicago points, 28 of them come from the hot hand of Michael Jordan. Charles Oakley coming back in. He has been quiet. He hasn't been much of a factor here. And there's a lot left in his game that we haven't seen or gotten. The Celtics haven't gotten a taste of yet. By the way, in hockey, Hartford leads Montreal 2-0. Do that so up Bob Neal's thing at halftime. Sure, he appreciates it. Oh, sure. I've admired his work ever since I was a little boy. <laughs> Bird seeks his 13th point and has it. By the way, Bob and Red Auerbach will be in Denver tomorrow for the Portland Denver playoff. We'll follow our Braves baseball telecast from Atlanta. WTBS, the airline's best friend, Mark Jordan. Partially blocked. Out of that mess comes Jerry Seaston. For Bird, he beats Woolridge and goes for three. Yes. We're in the closing two minutes here. That ties it up, huh? Out of nowhere come the Celtics. Great back door. Jordan again beat Ainge and Bird. 30 for Jordan. What a pass. Well, Jordan's high for this year, which was cut short by injury, is 33. He's got 30 already. Oh, 
Bird fakes off balance. They call the travel. He claims he was pushed. The Paxson picking out Michael Jordan on that last sequence. Bird made to feel pretty small on that play. So Chicago has the lead back and they have the ball and we near the final minute of the half. Ainge plays Jordan up. Jordan sails by him. Takes a wild shot and Woolridge follows that up. Oh man. Highlight film, please. There are bodies flying all over this foot. <laughs> Kyle Macy gets back into the game. Boy, well, he can't get in in time and Boston brings it up down by four with 52 seconds left in what has been a thrilling first half. McHale, knock loose, foul on the arm, two shots. Corzine argues, third foul. Mike Smart gets into the game, and Corzine, with the three fouls, goes out. Okay, a rookie out of Canisius. Talking to Mike Thibault, their assistant coach today about Mike. He's going to spend the entire summer with him playing basketball. Schmeck will be getting lots of special instruction. He started basketball late in his career, but they believe he has a future, and they're going to invest a lot of time in him this summer. 15 for McHale. It's a two-point game. Chicago has led virtually throughout. Packs in front court. They've led by as many as 12. Seasting all of the packs in. Oakley handles the ball. He's had a quiet half. Smirk. That won't go. McHale the rebound. Down to the deck goes Seasting and Oakley. Bird, meanwhile, is checked on the baseline but finds McHale and he bangs it home. I wonder if Oakley took the license plate of Jerry Seasting, who got a little shot in on him that no one noticed. Now Woolridge bangs into Seasting and an offensive foul on Woolridge. These things getting away with some stuff out here, the way I see it. And the players know it. Now the two officials have a meeting, and let's see what's going on. They called an offensive foul on Woolridge, and I, I think... I wonder if they threw Woolridge out of the game, Skip. Madden gave a very decisive arm movement on that. Well, I would... A 20-second timeout has finally been called that will be taken. At the other end a moment ago, when Seasting got tied up with Oakley, he gave him a little massage as he left him. Oakley's a real cool guy, didn't react to it. Then Seasting found himself in another incident with Woolridge. Looked like Woolridge is trying to get even for what happened with Oakley. Could be, could be. But what happens is, or at least for me, I just saw Oakley and Seasting on the deck, and I don't know who threw who there. Well, they got tied up. I don't think, I, I'm not sure if any, but I think they might have just landed. When you, two, two players fall awkwardly and they crash together, one guy thinks the other guy caused it, which is not necessarily the case. Woolridge has not been ejected, by the way. Last sequence at the well, there's Bulls in. Oakley ran right over Seasting and then deposits him on the deck. Well, Seasting also it. kept pushing Oakley away. And who knows? Well, if Seasting's pushing Oakley, he's goofy. Another whistle. Well, you, Skip, you feel a guy going away from you, and he's lost his momentum. And no matter how big or small you are, you can have an effect on his continuous direction. Well, Parrish is at the foul line here, and he can shoot Boston into the lead with six seconds left in the half. And as is so often the case with the Celtics, how did they get? You look like Chicago's dominated the half, and here they are about to take the lead. It happens time after time after time. Because they do it as a team unspectacularly most of the time. Right. Chicago up. is just incredible with their individual executions. Parrish has 11. Four, three, two, one. Good if it goes. The half is over. And at the break in Boston, we have got a wild and woolly one going. Bob Beal will update you on the other playoff action. At halftime, 
the Celtics lead by... Thank you very much. Well, if Michael Jordan stays as sensational as he's been, Chicago has a chance. If not, tough. Well, he didn't break a record that much we know in the first half of uh, this game with his 30-point effort, but it has been absolutely spectacular. It is not winning basketball, however, for 48 minutes to go one-on-one -on -one and serve that up constantly, but it's great for the fans, and it's great to see Michael Jordan on the loose because he is special. There's no one like him. This is my favorite of all of them because that's... <laughs> Dennis Johnson did everything absolutely perfectly and got nothing to show for it. He forced him to that long outside bomb. Although I think one of my favorites was when Michael forced one, missed the shot, and Woolridge was there for the jam. I mean, what, what a team they are tonight, and it's really been spectacular. It's a heck of a basketball game. You all stay with us, and we'll be back with a play-by-play -play story on quarter number three right after this. Sixty one fifty nine that's the halftime score and there are your statistics not many rebounds for Chicago. Huh? No that's disappointing for them but their shooting of course uh, was so well there wasn't much reason for rebounding both teams remarkable shooting sixty one percent together see that eight for eight from the foul line for the Bulls that's all one guy Michael Jordan the only man to go to the line. And the hostilities resume, and Boston brings it up the floor, and Dennis Johnson walks it up. Just to show you how much one-on-one -on -one play, actually, for both teams, is, is expressed by the assists. Both teams with only nine assists each. Dennis Johnson comes in firing and misses, and Corzine the rebound. Dennis and Corzine with three fouls each as they play in this game. Gene Banks also has three, but he's a Chicago reserve. Macy heads into the lane. Drops it off very nicely to Oakley. Did he walk? Yes. So Boston has it back. There are your individual point leaders. Better balance for Boston. That is normally the case. It's all frontline players for Boston. That's where their strength is, and that's where it's coming out. But it's anybody's game here. We have 11.20 left in the third quarter. Bird got it hung up. Parrish kept it alive for Dennis Johnson. He gets the hit. Only his second of the night. Chicago. Boston. Go ahead, Excuse me, Skip. Chicago without a shot blocker with Juwan Oldham out of the lineup really misses in a, in a situation like that. That's where they needed a big guy. Warriors got it rattled around, but not through. Jordan plays Dennis Johnson. McKay a low against Oakland. Dennis, the open man. They used to say that throwing the ball into McKay was when his teammates used to kid him was like throwing the ball into the black hole. You never see it again. <laughs> but they got on his case, and now he's giving the ball up as he did then to Dennis Johnson quite nicely. Jordan forced it, missed it. Bird rebounded it from Corzine. Great pass. Foul Oakley. Two shots fair. That's the third foul on Oakland. And that was a foul. Major League foul there. As you look at that again, we should point out Elgin Baylor has the record for most playoff points. In a half, 33 in a game. What is it, 61? And our buddy Rick Barry is second with 55 in a playoff game. Rick's got a couple other stats in there. Rick has a lot of records. He's a good one. Most field goal attempts. <laughs> In the game, my goodness, uh, 48. I hope he's <laughs> listening in out in LA. Have a nice night, Rick. <laughs> Rick has a lot of records in the NBA playoff book. Some good, some not. I want to kid him a little bit. Jordan dribbling around up top. One on the shot clock. No, it won't count. The 24 seconds expired. Chicago wants to slow the tempo, but not that much. And they rush it in, and McHale gets a basket. And Chicago suddenly beginning to weaken. They call time up. Not only did they fail to get the shot away in 24 seconds, they decided not to bother to play defense. Is Boston pulling away for good? We'll be back to find out right after these messages. 9.55 remaining in the third quarter, and the Celtics, who were down by 12 in the second period, now lead by seven. 
And Michael Jordan hasn't gotten up in this second half. Boston has outscored Chicago 7-2. Jordan made up for that last one that was called off. Just when you think he's going to hit one of those cold spells that you almost always do, he does something like that. 68-63. Six passes before the shot. Celtics passed the ball so well among themselves. I'm going to lay a little story on you as we go along here. Watching Dennis Johnson, a great defensive player, trying to play the red-hot Michael Jordan reminds me of a story about a dear friend of mine, a guy I know you remember, Don Ole. Oh, yes. Played with Baltimore and with Detroit for so many years and was a great defensive player himself. Dennis is red-hot. He's hit four in a row in this quarter. 20-second timeout called by Chicago, and they're down by nine. And what Dennis Johnson is going through tonight, Ohl tells the story about a playoff when he was with Baltimore. They were playing the Lakers, and his job was to guard Jerry West, and he said he played the best defense of his life, and Jerry scored 42 points against him, and Los Angeles won the game, and the writers came to Ohl after the game and said, well, I gave him my best shot. He said... I guarantee you one thing when we play him again tomorrow night he's not going to score 42 and old kicker to the story is and I was right he scored 45 <laughs> <laughs> the point being that no matter how good you play defense if a great player is red hot you're not going to stop him. play resumes there and Chicago brings it up and they have suddenly found themselves in arrears by nine when you look at their scoring skip it's as usual it's coming from the front line that's what's killing Chicago now Dennis is fretting Jordan, but Woolridge pops it home from outside. He has 16. Dennis Johnson to the front court. He has added a new dimension here. Selix, he was not getting it done offensively in the first half, but he's cooking now. He's five out of five. And now Michael Jordan knows how it feels for the other hand as he's getting lit up. Well, Ridge Ains jumps in, knocks that away. Look at the hustle by Danny Ainge. Bird for Parrish. And a foul. Danny Ainge started that, and that typifies the Boston Southern. And this is what typifies them. Look at how they're all going over to him. Spectacular effort by Ainge. Fortunately for him, it went into the right hands when he threw the ball in. Watch Bird with the bounce pass. It's a big man like in his dipsy doodle guard shot by Parrish and Floyd as Bird react. And everybody ran over to Ainge and patted him on the back. Parrish with 15, Corzine with four fouls. So he's gone for a while and Sidney Green is back in and all of a sudden Chicago is in a world of hurts. Woolridge against the double team, no. But there is Green who tips it right in. His first point. Corzine well, just couldn't keep the pace in this one, and that's why he's out for the more mobile Sidney Green. Offensive foul against Parrish. Second foul on Parrish. He and Oakley were popping elbows at one another. Jordan up the floor for Chicago. They trail by 10. They still trail by 10. Dennis Johnson knocked it out of bounds. Oh, they say it went off a Chicago player. Looked like Dennis touched the last. Might have been a break for Boston. Dennis Johnson to the front court. Bird from three-point country left it short. And Oakley the rebound. 7.05 left third quarter. Woolridge, one on two, got it anyway. He has 18. That's Woolridge did his best in the open court. Uncontainable. And it's an eight-point game. Chicago comes battling back. Jordan deflected that. Dennis Johnson winds up with it. Six out of six in the half. He has 14. 79-69 with 6.35 remaining. Jordan one-on-one -on -one with Dennis. Oh. With the left hand this time. 
We're talking about one of the best defensive guards in the NBA. But you got to give Dennis Johnson some credit. He's getting lit up, but now he's doing it at the other end. In fact, he's outscored him 12-4 in this quarter. Parrish does his thing. Left it short, missed the tip. And Sidney Green out of there with it. 79-71. Boston has the lead. Oakley thought about a drive, shoots the jump. That won't go. McHale the rebound. That's the price you pay when Oakley and other people don't touch the ball. They don't have that touch. Bird for three. As usual, Larry Bird was here two hours before the game, shooting for approximately one hour. Knocked away off the body of McHale. Dennis Johnson has it. Parrish. In and out. Oakley with a rebound. And Sidney Green touched the ball, landed out of bounds, over-hustling on the play, but that was not a good play. Oakley has control. Parrish out, Walton in. These aren't basketball fans in Boston Garden. That's seven out of seven in the quarter for Dennis Johnson. Timeout called by Chicago. This is like the old Roman Coliseum. They just come to see the Lions always win. We'll be back after this. I'll send one dollar to NBA catalog post office box eight zero zero eight zero zero Seattle Washington nine eight. 108 your dollar will be credited toward your very first order. Atlanta winning big now they're up by 13 over Detroit. And Houston is bombing Sacre Bois. It's only 37 points and a half. That's unusual. Meanwhile some extracurricular activities apparently going on here. I don't know what do you John. Yes, uh, one of the guards here at the Boston Garden is escorting someone to the door and it caught the attention of the Bulls bench. But it was not any of the Bulls. <laughs> Play will resume. 5.15 left in the quarter. It's a 13-point Boston game. Macy against Ain. Green shoots his jump shot. He doesn't do that often. Oakley the tip. Oakley announcing his presence. He's been very quiet. Celtics enjoy an 11 point lead with five minutes left in the third quarter. You know, Bill Walton wants to be part of this victory that Boston senses. He's been quiet. Boy, it's a war inside Walton and Green. Seven on the shot clock. Dennis Johnson finally missed one. It was partially blocked. And here comes Kyle Macy and a Chicago team that has played well here. They've played about as well as they can play, and they're down by 11. They led by 12 in the second quarter. Oakley in tight against Walt. Bird picks his puck. Dennis Johnson heads the other way. They double teamed him so well. Dennis draws the foul, shoots two. The constant pressure that Boston creates in pushing the ball up the court that the Bulls are finding very difficult to deal with. And the interesting thing is it's not necessarily the guards. It's the big men who are beating the guards down on offense for Boston. You see Green picked up his third foul. Dennis Johnson has 16, 14 in the quarter. That is the fourth miss at the line. Chicago is perfect, eight out of eight. Jordan has shot them all. Bulls haven't gone to the free throw line in the second. second no. half. Now 21 of 25 from the line for Boston, but then in fairness, let's not knock on the official. Boston takes the ball inside for the most part. Chicago does not. Except for this guy, he'll get in there every chance he gets. He jumps in and left it short, and Walton the rebound. More good defense. 
Dennis Johnson winds up in the seats to see if he's all right. Our statistician isn't. <laughs> Jim Stamos. See if the TV monitor works here. Yeah, yeah it works. Oh, oh, I just turned it off. A fan in the front row got shaken up here. Oh, he's bleeding. Yeah, he got his glasses got broken, I think. But I, I don't think it's anything serious. Basket interference is a call here, and the ball goes back to Boston. Eighty-five, seventy-three. Our score: three fifty left in the third quarter. Lost my soda. <laughs> Nobody said it was going to be easy. How about that spe spectator? How he feels? Probably angry. He's missing part of this game. It wasn't anything serious for sure. McHale jumps in, draws the foul, shoots two. They are relentless. The Celtics just keep coming at you. Well, McHale's talent is getting the position. That's that's a skill all its own. Then when he gets the ball and makes himself a target, he knows what to do with it. He's really a complete player inside. McHale has his 20th point. McHale led him with nine in the first quarter. Bird had 13 in the second. Dennis Johnson has 14 in the third. Always a different guy. That foul shooting disparity is really going to be revealing if this continues to the end of the game. And it's remarkable the Bulls have not drawn fouls. Only Michael Jordan has been to the line. Ames knocks that loose, but Green gets it back. Ten on the shot clock. Green forces it inside. Oakley has it blocked away. Blocked away again. And finally gets a hoop and a foul on Walt. Is he tough, Oakley? Now, Oakley is six foot nine. Walton's three inches taller than him. Walton's inside. Oakley still maintains his position. Walton with a fine block from behind, but there was body contact. Oakley seeks his ninth point. He can bring his team back to within 11. The last 30 games of this season, when Oakley got playing time, he averaged 15 points, 13 rebounds a game. But he's been quiet thus far. Dennis Johnson front court against Macy, who holds him. Second foul on Macy. Dennis Johnson at the line to shoot two. He has 16. They have four men in double figures. McHale, 21. Bird, 19. 16 each for Johnson and Parrish. It's amazing. Dennis Johnson was 0 for 6 from the field in the first half. He is now 2 of 4 at the foul line. Eight seventy six. We have three oh three left in the third quarter. Jordan drops it off very nicely. And Oakley connects again. He has eleven. Scott Wedman is in the game for Boston. Bird takes a rest. You could do an hour's basketball special on Michael Jordan's play in this game tonight. <laughs> McHale leaves it short, but a foul is called against Chicago. Oakley picks up his fourth. Stan Albeck really upset about that call on Oakley. Woolridge back into the game. Oakley with four fouls goes out. 2.40 left third quarter. Kale seeks his 23rd point. Jerry Seasting in. Dennis Johnson gets a big hand as he goes up. There's 
Johnson overcame a lot to put his stamp on this game which he did in the third quarter after that first half when his man massaged him for 30 points and he went over six well he came back strong 90 78 with two and a half minutes left in the quarter they see down low Jordan hangs in the air but he, the magic is gone at least a little bit Seasting heads the other way he had a big second quarter he's the only reserve for Boston who scored a point Walton wheels and deals and Seasting finds Ainge all by himself Most unlikely rebounder, Jerry Seasting, made a very nice play. First points by Ainge since the first quarter, but he has played a very solid game all night long. Sidney Green against Walton, left it short. Rebound, Walton. Here comes Jerry Seasting. Kyle Macy with a steal. They go to the deck. Boy, I thought Ainge got away with a push. They caught an over and back violation, and the ball will go to Chicago. With a minute 29 left third quarter. Right there. The other point. The foul Jack Madden caught. was on the other side of him and perhaps couldn't see him. Say this for the Boston team. Well, they're not worried about floor burns. They make these guys make a lot of money, but they play with. Great gusto. George Gervin, who has been, because of the great play of Jordan, the forgotten man here tonight, is about to check in. Gervin's played only two minutes. Woolrich threw up a prayer, got no answer, but did draw the foul. Second on McHale. Woolridge will uh, shoot two. Two shots. Orlando Woolridge, one of the Chicago Bulls' many free agents at the end of this season. Gervin, Jawan Oldham, and Gene Banks also. Boston calls timeout here, and they do so with a minute 23 remaining in the third quarter. Well, now it's really tough for Chicago because Jordan isn't playing badly. Please, I, I don't want to give that impression. But he was playing at a level above what human beings can do in the first half, and now he's a, a mere mortal. <laughs> and as we know, in 48 minutes, sooner or later, the Celtic style of play gets to you. You can't do it with one man, as we learn over and over again, no matter how great anyone is individually. I don't know who said it first in this game, but it's been said by a lot of players and coaches, if you live by the jump shot, Inevitably, you're going to die by the jump shot, and that's really what's happened to Chicago tonight. Well, also, Skip, they do not have an inside game, an inside man to go to, a dominant figure. Oakley is forced into that role, be the center. Um, he is a really a power forward and potentially a great one, but they don't have the inside game, and Corzine is really a perimeter jump shooter at his size, and he was forced also into that to that role tonight of being the big man. He just didn't have it. He couldn't contain Parrish or McHale. They really missed Juwan Oldham, I feel, who, despite the fact that he's destined to be a backup center, uh, for this team, plays an important role because he's a shot blocker. He's one of the league's best shot blockers. And he is missed. When you pull yourself together, I'm going to continue on another point. I hope so. A minute 23 left in the... In the third quarter. Don't forget Rick Barry, Bill Russell standing by out in the out in the forum. Where the Laker girls and the Lakers and the San Antonio Spurs will all perform after our game. Mind if I have fun doing this, do you? <laughs> what you do? <laughs> little break from baseball. Yeah. It's been a couple hours since I did one of those. Woolridge <laughs> makes the free throw. He has 20. Well, I braves baseball tomorrow night. The Dodgers at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium at 7.35. Fernando Valenzuela and David Palmer, the pitcher. And more NBA basketball after that game. Well, we 
give you as much great sports as we can on the Sousa station. Mikhail unloads. Do these guys ever take a bad shot? <laughs> Maybe they just did. But Ainge had the buzzer to beat and darn near made it. That was a Bill Walton pass across the basket. Chicago can move to within 10, so Seasting is playing Gervin and it physically is no match for it. Look at him, look at him. Ah. <laughs> Offensive foul, oh. Gervin. Seasting played him to perfection. Seasting's a tough customer. He's another guy who's not blessed with great physical ability. But he maximizes what ability he has. He's now in heaven, too. Basketball heaven here in Boston. Mikhail over Green. That's a serious jump shot by Mikhail. He has 25. It's 94-80, and we have 30 seconds left in the quarter. Jordan. Oh! That's... Very nice. Jordan has six in the quarter, 36 in the game. They have denied him the ball very well in this period. Boston will now play for the final shot. We'll give you the time as it becomes significant. Nine seconds left in the quarter. McHale never saw it coming. Six seconds left in the period. He has that keen look on his face all the time. Things don't go just his way. Four, three. Two, one, that's good if it goes. And it does at the buzzer. This thing isn't over yet. Chicago is playing gallantly. You've got to give them credit for that. But at the end of three, Boston has built a 10-point advantage. America's game. It's NBA basketball, America's game, brought to you in part by Honda Automobiles. And Boston is leading by 10. That's a pretty good record. But of course, they had a pretty good record, 67 and 15. Skip, when we talked at the outset about the Bulls' chances, the one point I made was that they had played the Celtics so well this year on the boards. I don't know what the numbers are, but it doesn't appear to be the case tonight. And that's where Boston is dominating. This is a game of big men when the game is played in a dominant way, and the Celtics' big men are dominating this game. From the foul line, unofficially, Boston 25 of 30, and Chicago 11 out of 11. There's a big difference right there. Whoa, Jordan almost lost that Woolridge pass. And the final 12 minutes unfold. John Andre Skip Carey with you. Jordan drops it off. Woolridge from 16. That will not go. And there's Perry. In the first half, all those were going in, those open shots, right? See, our next action will be Sunday afternoon from Milwaukee, where the Nets are going to play. Three on the shot clock. Parrish knows it, but he missed it. Michael Jordan, the rebound. Celtics outscored him 33-25 in the third quarter. Dennis Johnson picks up his fourth foul. Bulls are abiding by the isolation of leaving Woolridge or Jordan, mostly Jordan, alone with their defensive man and letting him explode, use those one-on-one -on -one skills. Jordan has been perfect from the foul line. That's his 39th point of the evening. By the way, Baylor got the 61, the playoff. Hi, right here in the Boston Garden back in what was 62? 1962. And Elgin's back in business, huh? Yes. The LA Clippers took over that job yesterday. Parrish. Basketball operations. 
Dennis Johnson is still red hot. Ninety six eighty six ten forty left in our game. Traveling on Gervin he's having enough he just can't not get on track at all. Well the little guys bothering him too he's beating him to position. Jerry Seasting. Jordan for a guy they didn't even want to play this year that's amazing. Forty points. It would have counted two shot fouls. Stan Albeck all over Jack Madden. I heard a new story on Larry Bird when he gets here to shoot a couple of hours before the game. Preceding that, he goes up here in the rafters of the Boston Garden, runs 10, 15 minutes, loosens up. Man is a basketball fiend. Yeah. It shows, too. Boy, he can play it. Yes, he used the left hand. Yep, tonight. No, he hasn't. Play. You're right. Probably saving that for later. Jordan. Great outlet by Perry. Wedman could not control the rebound. Banks does. Ninety-eight, eighty-six, Boston is the sixth play yelled out by Stan Albeck. Let's see what it is. Banks drew the foul. I think it'll be on Wedman. Let's see. Well, they say it's on Larry Bird. I thought it was on Wedman too. But Bird is called for the foul. It's only his second. Kevin McHale comes back in. Wedman goes out. Jerry Seasting is the only Celtic to score. In fact, Boston has eight points off the bench, all by Seasting. And Chicago has only four two by Banks, two by Green. Banks shadowing Bird now. Seasting. Nine twenty-five left in our game. Woolridge makes a great move, but cannot cash it in. Both teams flailing away now. That's fine with Boston. They've got the lead. Parrish, nobody near it. What a pass by Dennis Johnson. Timeout called by Chicago. Timeout on the floor. Nine oh nine left. The Celtics lead it by fourteen points. The Celtics lead it by 14. Don't forget, after our game, the Lakers and Spurs from the Forum. And tomorrow night, after Braves baseball, Red Auerbach will join Bob Neal from Denver, where Portland and Denver will have that. He's a dandy, that Auerbach. And what a smart cookie. He has kept this franchise a contender except for a couple of years over the last three decades just done an amazing job we were trying to figure out how he's going to get young Mr. Robinson of the Naval Academy to play for the Celtics next year <laughs> <laughs> Woolridge score it and a foul Woolridge has 22 McHale the foul his third Woolridge makes it an 11 point game. Scores his 23rd point of the night. Corzine with six points. Bird over Banks. He has 23. 102 89 with 835 remaining. Time. Jump ball. They couldn't couldn't call a three second because nobody ever got possession. By the way, Bird 
joins Cliff Hagan and Calvin Murphy as the only players in NBA history to finish a regular season ranked in five different statistical categories at the year's end. Boston wins the draw. They're winning everything now. It's a great trivia question, Cliff Hagan. You didn't know I knew all that, didn't you? <laughs> Dennis Johnson continues his surge. He's Cliff. been the big difference here in the second half. Cliff Hagan, the athletic director at the University of Kentucky. My inspiration for hook shooting. One of the uh, game's great hook shooting artists. Oh. Watching Pettit and Hagen back in St. Louis as a kid Woo! was great. Watching Michael Jordan now is great, too. <laughs> He's got 42. 104, 91. 740 remaining in our game. Boston trailed by as many as 12 in the second quarter, but have been in control since halftime. Great anticipation by Woolridge on a steal. This thing isn't over yet by any stretch of the imagination. Jordan takes it to the hole. He's and got 44. And a foul. And Boston has let down here a little bit. And they're letting him right back into it. It's an 11 point game and a lot of time left. 722. Jordan just drifts by and continues. Larry Bird next. He has been perfect. In fact, Chicago has not missed the foul shot. That's 45 for Jordan. Bird against the double T. Knocked away. Belongs to Boston. Nine on the shot clock as Danny Ainge replaces Jerry Seastick. Celtics going with the first team. Mikhail back to Bird. Knocked away. Five on the shot clock. Dennis Johnson for three. Didn't get any. They battled for the rebound. Foul Boston. I think Mikhail. His fourth. Jordan causing problems on the boards for the Bullets. Oh, bullets. The he would if they were in this game. <laughs> That's 46. He has an eight-point quarter here. Had 14 in the first, 16 in the second. Eight in the third. And he finally misses the free throw. First miss of the night for Chicago. We're going to wait to see the papers here in Boston tomorrow. They cover this game so well. And the Celtics players' responses to uh, Michael Jordan's display here. Bob Ryan does a terrific job covering oh. Boston. One of the best. Dennis Johnson. He has a 21 point half work. Jordan heads the other way. 625. Here he goes again. Left that one short. He's trying to do it all by himself, and good as he is, that may be too big a task for it. Larry Bird on the move. Jordan. Great shot. He shot that on the way down. His body control is. Amazing. It's a nine point game, less than six minutes. 106 97. Foul Woolridge on the back of McHale. Look at that. He's just about down on the floor, which would have been a travel when he knocks it in. Surprised Stan Allback hasn't gone to Charles Oakley yet. On the bench with four fouls. Parrish from 13 drills. Of course, he can't bother Parrish, and he's not doing any rebounding. They just have so many weapons. Knocked away by Dennis Johnson. Jordan gets it back. Boy, he has been magnificent. It went off Parrish, and Chicago still controls it. But what the danger for Chicago is with Jordan doing so much of it, guys start standing around, and then you get no involvement at all. Absolutely. A 
Green ball by Jordan. That won't go. From Dennis Johnson, Ames, McHale, Bird, Parrish, and a foul. There's the Celtics. With 5.04 left, they lead by 13. The front line crushing here by Boston. You got McHale leading the break, Bird in front of him, and Parrish. I mean, that's a fast break executed by your starting front line. And at the other end, Dennis Johnson outleaped Orlando Woolridge and Dave Corzine to start the break. Corzine and Banks lose it out of bounds. Chicago calls timeout. Bob Neal will update you on the other playoff action after these words from our sponsor. Playoff action tonight, Detroit at Atlanta. The Detroit Pistons led by 12 early, but the Hawks brought little 5-7 Spud Webb off the bench. He gets above Willis for the rebound. He scores here. He has 18 points. Hawks lead now 122 to 110 with only four minutes left in the game in the fourth quarter at the Omni in Atlanta. Back to the Boston Garden. Okay, Bob, thank you very much. Mark Goldsmith is our director tonight, and his lovely wife, Laura, is our graphics operator. And Glenn Diamond is our producer. Did you just execute a funny? No, no, not at all. Oh, just reporting me. Inbounds pass to Dennis Jets. When you have to ask, you can rest assured it wasn't funny. Well, you see the power of suggestion is that. Oh, my. That's too involved for me. As Bird starts his drive, foul on Banks. Banks trying to frustrate Bird. He's a good defensive player and a very physical guy. Jordan getting a, I would assume, very brief rest right now. Bird with the left hand. Banks got him again. Shoots two. That's five on Banks. Okay. Bird gets isolated. He too can get things done one on one. What he has is great size and ability to shift and dribble with both hands and, of course, shoot with both hands. Bird, a 90% free throw shooter, and he'll go for two here. He has a very quiet 23 points. Now he has 24. Dennis Johnson, 24. 22 for Parrish. 25 for McHale. Ainge has nine, Seasting has eight, and that's all they're scoring. Woolridge up the floor with only 4.38 left. It's a 15-point game. Woolridge almost walked, missed the shot. And it's cocktail hour for the Celtics. Wearing a total collapse. Puzzled by Stan Albeck's strategy now. Jordan's on the bench, Oakley's on the bench. Steal by Banks. He's off to the race. His second hoop for the night. Banks says all over Larry Bird. Oh, that is amazing. You can't play better defense. Bird has 27. 114.99. Warred. Larry Bird. Jordan getting ready to come back. Three and a half minutes remaining as Dennis Johnson crosses the line against John Paxson. Dennis. He'll swear later it was a pass, but it wasn't. We want to give him an assist on that. Time out on the floor with 323 left and the Celtics are now taking a little walk in the park. 323 left, 116.99. Our score, Boston on top. Boy, down to the truck, they're all a Twitter about who the player of the game will be. Well, we don't know yet. The game's not over. Paxson and Macy bring it up. A couple of watch pocket guards in the game now for Chicago. Watch pocket. Woolridge pops one home for 25 tonight. 
just don't call the game a bond runner, okay? No. <laughs> it's getting a little muggy here. 116-101. Well, let's let the fans get in on our argument. Jordan has 48 points, but his team is being soundly defeated. Dennis Johnson is in a big second half, but while he's played well, he's also given up many of those 48 points, so who do you want to play of the game? Well, I think if Jordan hits the magic 50, <laughs> <laughs> well, against it. You to, right. Oakley misses, but drew the foul. 2.43 left. Parrish called for his third. The Chief, they call him. Boy, he found happiness here in Boston, didn't he? Certainly did, particularly this season when he's been playing six minutes a game less than he did last year because of Bill Walton's presence and he is really in the groove. Oakley. That's his 12th point. He has played progressively better as the game has gone on. His first playoff action. As usual the Celtics win on no. mismatches that their powerful front line creates and Parrish and McHale particularly are just too big for any other duo. You know, interestingly about that player of the game, that's one of the charms of the Boston team. You don't, it isn't automatic. It's not one guy scoring 50 points or dominating. They do it as a unit. Which is the way this game is supposed to be played. Great move by Bird. He'll shoot too. So angry with himself that he didn't make that jump shot after all that faking. I still go back to the quote by Dominique Wilkins in Sports Illustrated, an article about Bird. He said, you play him you're looking into the eyes of an assassin, which I think is a, a meant it in a complimentary sense. It pretty well says it about this thing. I'm sure Larry Bird, if he thought of that line, might turn it right around and attribute it to Dominique as well. Yeah, we heard Bob say Spud Webb had 18. I wonder how many Mr. Wilkins has. For about. Bird has 28 here. Game two of this series will be Sunday. It will be on Dick Stockton's network. <laughs> Jordan with a little, how do you do? Creativity. So Jordan now shoots two and can get himself an even 50 tonight. Skip, every member of the Boston Celtics was made to feel small tonight by this guy. But you get paid for winning. Not that Jordan hasn't done all he can do, but well, but when you have a guy come out and just do it to you at will, as Jordan did, it's like everyone knows it's coming, and there it, ha there it comes, time and time again. He has 49, but only 19 in the second half. Oh, he's been great. We have reached the two-minute period. Rick Barry and Bill Russell from the Forum will have the Lakers and San Antonio. Following this one. And we won't be with you much longer. A minute 50 left. It's been all Boston in the second half. A half remaining. Haynes, that's for two. He didn't get any. Oakley the rebound. Maxson, front court. Sidney Green wheels, deals it off to Oakley. He's called for traveling, and Boston has it back. And these teams will go back to the drawing board tomorrow and Saturday. Stan Aldak's thinking about that right now. But I don't envy him the job of trying to stop this Celtic machine. Greg Kite about to get into the game. For Boston. Bird, easy layup. Jordan, He's got 30. Jordan victimized by turning his head, lost track of the ball. Paxson, for three, got none. Got corked in the eye by Green, and a foul is called. 
Green will be at the line to shoot two. Angels are right. Sidney Green there clipped him. Ainge rallies here to give Green a little massage when he goes up for the shot. He goes back to his eye. And he gets a lot, lot of scrapes and doesn't win many, does he? Third kill is in the game. Greg Kite is in the game. Jerry Seasting about to return. Green misses the first, tries again. Well, we'll be zipping the sports hatch in the next few days, folks, so keep that dial on TBS. Greg Pank the rebound with 42 seconds left in the game. It's all Boston, 121-104. This is their biggest lead of the night. Chicago made them work for it. They led by 12 in the second quarter, but... Paris shoots two. Foul on Paxson. Oakley seems to be paying a price tonight for not boxing out. He's such a great rebounder. Dennis Johnson gets a hand as he goes to the bench. He's had a big offensive second half. He leaves with 26 points, 24 since the break. One major letdown by the Bulls. They did not keep this man away from the boards enough. They wanted to make it a low-scoring game and were unable to do so. 123-104. 20 seconds left. Green. That won't go. Parrish the rebound. Outlet Seasting. Eight seconds left. Well, you see the time, isn't it? That does not count. The game is over. And though it wasn't easy, it was a two-point game at halftime. It's a convincing win for the Celtics. 123-104 over Chicago. They lead the best of five series. One game to none, and we'll be back to recap it. 123-104 Boston. That's the final. The Chicago team gave it all they had. They were gallant and all that, but frankly, I don't think they're good enough. Do you, John? No, they don't have the guns, particularly under the boards. Uh, Michael Jordan was absolutely spectacular, as we saw tonight. And his style and Orlando Woolridge's style were almost enough, but uh, in a 48-minute period, just not enough. And I think they suffered particularly under the basket, and the rebounds should tell that story. Tough job for the Chicago team now and for Stan Albach trying to get them ready for game two. They played so hard here tonight and wound up losing by 19. Who do you have for the player of the game, Jack? Pretty hard to ignore Michael Jordan tonight. We chose him as our player of the game. 49 points, four rebounds. He also had a few assists to a spectacular individual effort by this guy. And so Miller left.